Hello, my name is Marcus King. I'm a sophomore from Governor French Academy, and today I'll be presenting my project, the calculation and comparison of star formation within the Pinwheel Galaxy. First, I want to give some acknowledgments. So my father, Mrs. Stewart and Mr. Jones, um, helped me learn the specifics of my project and work on some resources for it. And Dr. Tony Wong helped me process some of my data and go into a bit more detail with it. He is from the University of Illinois Astronomy Department. Galaxies are big and their internal dynamics shape how their structure evolves. So on the left, you can see an image here. This is a galaxy's density waves. So where the circles are closer together, there's more stuff. And where more stuff is, you have a higher star formation rate. Um, and so the star formation rate determines a lot of factors about a galaxy. This is the one I'm looking at. You can see where the stuff is and where the stuff isn't. Um, high densities and lower densities, spiral arms in the nucleus. Um, this galaxy I'm looking at, known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, or M101, has large star-forming regions, um, and star for formation rate determines if galaxies are old or young. So you can see how stars are formed on the right. A uh, large cloud of gas and dust comes together, coalesces into a star. Occasionally, a solar system will form around it. I want to ask if, star if different methods used to calculate star formation rate are consistent. So I don't expect them to be because there's a lot of inherent variability um, in the data I'm working with, and stuff could vary by possible orders of magnitude. I have nine different methods of calculating star formation rate. They have a lot of similarities and differences, and they're all based on several different factors, all underlying um, because they calculate star formation rate. So method one used a general law known as the KS law. It um, uses this colored image on the left to produce this colored, this black and white image on the left. And it's um, from data from the image. I was able to plug that into a formula you can see on the right and get the star formation rate. The same thing goes for all nine methods. However, they all have different underlying methodologies behind them. So method two used hydrogen gas luminosity. Method three used um, the ultraviolet spectrum emission. So how bright stuff is in the spectrum there. Method four used infrared radiation, so how hot stuff is. Method five was a variation of the law used in method one with different applications and different uncertainties taken into account. There were different results for this one, but they're not wrong because um, when you take into account different uncertainties, and again, everything here is theoretical, you don't get wrong results. Number six was an application of gas luminosity, so how bright stuff is, um, but this one was special in how it took into account time Number seven measured oxygen concentrations within a galaxy and applied that to find the star formation rate. Method eight is another variation on the KS law, um, and it's more recent, so more uncertainties are taken into account for, so the formula is much more complex here. Method nine uses gas density, how close together gas is, and gas speed, how fast the gas is going. And faster gas means more star formation and warmer regions. For all of my results, there was no uh, consistent relationship between any of these. However, I did notice a significant one between four of my nine methods, between 10 to the negative fifth and 10 to the negative seventh orders of magnitude. There's a lot of systematic uncontrollable variables here that I can't, um, that I could not control, such as intergalactic dust obscurity. So if stuff is in front of the camera, I wasn't able to detect that. Um, variability of intergalactic measurements. So stuff at such great distances, um, can change a lot, and the different techniques used in different studies. After some deep research, there's no correlation between any of these methods, uh, other than the fact that they all calculate star formation rate, and so there's no catch-all formula here. Nothing is wrong, everything is theoretical, and the importance of this is it can help us determine how fast life can form. Because when you're thinking in systems, star formation rate can determine how fast solar systems form, how fast Earth-like worlds form, can help us change our worldview a bit. These are my uh, references, and thank you.